Welcome. What I want to do today is show you how to find the measure of my indicated angle of this triangle. Now, what we see here is we have three side lengths. Um, and we also have an angle that is what we call a right angle. And it's really important that once we have a right angle, we notice that we can also use our you know, trigonometric properties as well. So when using your trigonometric properties, it's important for you to understand, well, what exactly do they mean? So let's write them out. The first one that we're going to talk about is the tangent. The next one is the sine. And then we'll talk about the cosine function as well. So I'm also going to, I wanted to write these out because through the rest of the, of the video, I'm going to abbreviate uh, these three functions. So the first one, the tangent, what that represents, if I want to find the tangent of my angle, and let's just replace this question mark with x. The tangent of x is going to be equal to the ratio of two side lengths of my triangle. And the two side lengths for tangent is going to be your opposite over your adjacent. The sine function of an angle x represents the ratio of your opposite side length over your hypotenuse. And the cosine function represents the ratio of your adjacent side over your hypotenuse. Now you might be asking yourself, well, where are you getting uh, hypotenuse, adjacent, and opposite? Well. I get those by using my, uh, my right angle and also by using my x. So when I look at this and I see my angle x, one thing I need to determine is where the hypotenuse is. And hopefully, if you guys you know, work down the Pythagorean theorem, remember the hypotenuse is always your longest, longest side of the triangle. It's also the side that's directly across from my hypotenuse or directly across from my 90 degree angle. So we can label this side my hypotenuse always. Now. Your opposite and your adjacents are always going to kind of um, change depending on which angle you have. So here's my right angle. Depending on which angle I choose is going to really depend on which one is my opposite, which one is my adjacent. So if I have this angle x, the side that's adjacent is going to be the side length that's going to connect your angle with your 90 degree angle. So therefore, I can say that 65 is going to be my adjacent side. Therefore, by process elimination, or one way to always look at it, is your opposite is always the side length that's always the opposite of your original angle. So we can also say that 72 is going to be my opposite. Now, for this problem, we only need to choose one function that we we'll work with. But since they gave us all three sides, I want to show you that it doesn't matter which function you choose. Either one you pick, you're going to pick the right one as long as you make sure you plug in the correct values. So I'm just going to do all of them for you because I like you so much that I really want to make sure you understand that it doesn't matter which function you use, you're still going to get the exact answer as long as you use the functions correctly. So the tangent of x means the opposite, which is 72, over my adjacent, which is 65. Sine of x is going to be the opposite over my hypotenuse, which is 72 over 97. And therefore, the cosine of x is my adjacent side, 65, over my hypotenuse, 97. Now, it will be helpful for us to look at some of the decimals for these problems. And when you're using the decimal, I want you to use the full decimal in your calculator. I don't want you to abbreviate. But I'm just going to write down a little bit of abbreviation decimal so you can understand that each one of these ratios are different. So the tangent of x is going to be, let's see, we'll have 72 divided by 65. And I'm just going to abbreviate this, like I said, 1.107. Uh, All right, the sine of x, well, let's, 1, 6. The sine of x is going to equal 72 divided by 97, which is 0.7422. And the cosine of x equals 65 divided by 97, which is 0.6701. All right? So notice my ratios are all going to be the same. But what I want to do, remember, we want to find the value of x. So right now, we're taking the tangent of x, and we get that. We're taking the sine of x, or we're taking the cosine of x. So if I want to find exactly what the value of x is, I need to undo my functions. I need to undo the tangent function, undo the sine function, 
undo the cosine function. So how do we undo those functions? Well, thankfully for our calculator, it's what we call the inverse function. So the inverse tan undoes tan. The inverse cosine is the inverse function of cosine. And the inverse sine is the inverse function for sine. So what I'll write is, so if I take the inverse tan of what my value is, I'm going to get uh, my angle. Now, like I said, I want to make sure that you guys put them in correctly because I really do not want you to abbreviate. So I'm going to do 72 divided by 65, and then I'm going to take the inverse tangent of that answer. And what I get is 47.9, and I'm going to round that to 48 degrees. Okay? Now, when I do the inverse sine, inverse sine not of x, but of 0.7422. So I'll do 72 divided by 97. And then I'm going to take inverse sine of second answer, of that answer. And again, I get 47.9, which I'll round to 48 degrees. And lastly, I'll do co inverse cosine of 0 0.6701. And so I have 65 divided by 97. And then inverse cosine of that full answer is going to give me, again, 47.9. So what you can, I'll just round to 48 degrees. So what you'll notice, ladies and gentlemen, is as long as you understand what each one of these functions are and how to plug them in, then to use which uh, function you want to use, and then use the inverse, you'll understand that it doesn't matter which function you have. But it will usually mention by your problem by what, op by what values they give you. But hopefully you guys can see, no matter which function I chose, I got the missing value for my angle was 48 degrees.